Welcome back to Limited Edition Motor Cars. Ladies and gentlemen, today for your viewing pleasure, I have a 2005 Mercury Grand Marquis LS Ultimate. And this is a very interesting car. I wanted to make a quick video with this vehicle because 2005 is a very, very strange year for Panther Platform Cars. It's a transitional year uh, in Ford. And I want to kind of point out all the quirks and weirdness that is going on with the 2005 Grand Marquis and the Crown Victoria. I have one here and I figured I'd do a quick video. Uh, this is an all original car with only 30, I think 38,000 miles on it. So um, let's get started. All right, so 2005 Mercury Grand Marquis and Ford Crown Victoria. A town car as well, but not so much. Uh, these are transitional years, okay? So 2005 is a transitional year for the Panther platform. Uh, and we're gonna get into specifics in a second, but it's a very weird year because they were changing a bunch of stuff in these cars. And, and this car is kind of like an oddball. So this one and the Crown Vic are affected by all these little changes and we'll, we'll go over them in a second. But to kind of give you a recap of the Panther platform, in 2003, there was sort of a redesign, if you will, okay? Uh, Ford changed the way they made the frame, so they called it um, hydroformed frames, whatever, something like that. It's, I feel like it's one of those, like, uh, you remember the Cordobas, the Chrysler Cordobas, the, the, uh, the advertising campaign was rich Corinthian leather, that BS. So kind of something like that, something on those lines. But in 2003, Ford, for the first time, introduced rack and pinion steering for the Panther platform car, which was, which was a big deal, because before that it was recirculating ball and you know, yada, yada, yada. So these cars have rack and pinion steering and redesigned suspension. The front suspension was redesigned, so now you have kind of a coilover. The shocks on the back were now placed on the outside of the frame versus inside the frame, which made you know, changing them easier. And there were some other minor, minor changes here and there. But, but in 2005, Okay, well, well, we'll start with the exterior. First of all, on the exterior, the, the way to tell 2005 from any other year is <laughs> you have a physical radio antenna sticking out of the passenger side quarter panel. Okay, and what is the problem here? The problem, uh, back in the day, the, the word was that Ford had an issue with a supplier of its antennas. Okay, because typically the antennas were um, in the back window. I think the last year for a motorized antenna on the, on the town car was 94. If, if, yeah, I think it was 94 because 95 was already integrated into the window. I don't remember exactly when the Crown Vic switched over from a, from a physical antenna, but um, they had a problem with the supplier, so no, no uh, antenna in the back window. So Ford's like, eh, what, what are we gonna do? We're just gonna drill a hole and stick an antenna here. That's it. And this was the 2005 only, Crown Vic and Grand Marquis. Okay, town cars were spared. They didn't drill holes in town cars. They had some antennas for the town cars, but that's how you know 2005 from any other year on the outside, okay? This is factory, it was done at the factory. This is what they did, okay? Other than that, you really can't tell from the outside. But there are changes also. Um, let's look at the engine, okay? There's a one big one here that a lot of people complained about, and that is, Throttle by wire, okay? 2005 <laughs> is the first year. Come on. Oh, you can't see it here. Okay, you can't. So, no more throttle cable, okay? Throttle by wire. You have a little motor here. You have a little motor on the on a gas pedal. So, a lot of people, you know, bitched and whined about this. Oh, it's not responsive. It's slow, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the whole car is slow. So, I mean, what do you want? So, there was like a bunch of software updates to this over the years, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the first thing that they changed with 2005 is they added um, throttle by wire. Okay. So, the, the rest of the changes are on the inside. Again, this is a transitional year. It's very, very strange what they did here. It was kind of a half ass attempt. Okay. So, in 2005, Ford decided to redesign the steering column, okay? So it has a different steering wheel, different steering column, different shifter, you know, all of that stuff is different, okay? And they continued with this until the end of production in uh, 2012 for the Crown Victoria, 2011 for the Grand Marquis, okay? It was the same steering wheel for the town car, all right? So same airbag, just different logo, whatnot. So, but, and this car has an optional digital cluster. We'll talk about that in one second. Um, on the regular cars, the cluster in 2005 remained the same. So basically the cluster was a carryover from 
2004 and older models, but the steering column has changed. In 2006, they updated the cluster that had the Speedo and Attack next to each other, but prior to that, they didn't have that, okay? They only had the Speedo without the, the tachometer, um, and that was the kind of a weirdness about the 2005. So they didn't upgrade the cluster, they just upgraded the steering column and the steering wheel, and that was kind of weird. So another thing for 2005 is that it is the last year of the digital cluster. And I, I let me show you. I, I love digital clusters. I think they're the coolest thing ever. I wish they never went away. I, I don't know why they why they went away with them, but um, 05 was the last year for the Crown Vic and for the Grand Marquis to have a digital cluster. And let me show you. I'll start the scarf for a second. I don't want to suffocate here. I think this is the coolest thing ever. Just just look at it. It is designed for like older people in mind as everything is big, you know, large fonts and whatnot. You can see the speedometer, you can see your odometer, you have a gas gauge, you know, and a temperature here. You have all your like uh, information stuff here and it beeps too. It's pretty cool. I, I really like it. I think it's the coolest thing ever. Um, but um, yes, this was an option and, and this is the ultimate. So it has every single option available. I think the only thing it's missing is the sunroof. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if this was an option uh, in 2005. but. I think that's the only thing that's missing, but I think it's the coolest thing ever. So it was the last year uh, that was a carryover into in, in 2006. There was no more um, digital clusters available. And here's the thing that you could actually get a um, 2005 LX Sport, which was also like a bastard. You know what I mean? It was a, it was a mixed bag of parts. You, you, you did have a, a floor shifter. You, you did have an upgraded steering and a steering column, but you had an older cluster in it from from a 04 and before or you could you could opt for the um optional digital cluster uh which is extremely rare i, I think i've seen like one lx sport with a digital cluster very very rare so uh, that's kind of what they did with the with the 2005s and then in 2006 um they did some upgrades and uh, and town car is the same same way town car had also upgraded steering column steering wheel but the cluster carried over from 2000 um Four, and then in 2006, they upgraded the cluster um, on the Crown Victorious. But um, that's kind of that's kind of a quick recap of the 2005. I, I figured it was uh, and while I had the car here, um, uh, I do a quick video on it because um, uh, it, it's a weird year, and there's there's a lot of information that's being lost about these cars because they're getting older and you know they're disappearing from the from the landscape. And, and this one is in excellent condition, and uh, you know I, I figured I'd just do a quick video. Um, and here's the thing, it's, this, is the, this is the ultimate edition, I, I don't know why, I honestly don't know why Ford <laughs> named their cars uh, the top trim ultimate, because be before, with the town cars used to be like the Cartier signature, where the signature remained, and then they, they upgraded to the ultimate, you know, when I, when I hear the word ultimate, the first thing that pops into my head is the ultimate omelet at Denny's, but you know, that's just me, but um, that's your quick uh, 2005 uh, Mercury Grand Marquis lesson of the day. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.